Good morning. Well, I'd like to move on to the area which, uh, as Harry's mentioned, that we're here to see. It's about steam infusion and primarily the vacuum pump. Now, the vacuum pump comes in a couple of designs, and what you see here is an in tank unit. Uh, we also manufacture a similar design for production in line where we can then circulate fluids within the process line and we use the two different types of unit for different purposes. So what does the steam fuser do or the vacuum pump? Well it's a combined unit, the motive force for this unit is steam and we supply the unit uh, at a range of operating pressures because it's that operating pressure that dictates the characteristics that the unit operates to. The unit will pump, it will also mix and entrain fluids. So it's very effective at those and it's also a very effective medium for energy transfer. So what the benefits that the technology brings is that if we apply this in a process and a typical recipe type application, we can minimize production stages within limits because the device, depending on the operating characteristics, which are very controllable, can determine the amount of shear that we apply to the product, the heat transfer rate, and the mixing that we achieve, the amount of turbulence within the mixing chamber. And the, what we do see in applying these, uh, te this technology to the food industry is obviously with hydration of starches, and flavour enhancements when you look at your ingredients you can see potential improvements along a wide range of, of spheres there. So how does the technology work? Well you can see here we have a cutaway drawing of a vacuum unit <coughs> and it consists of the main body which we have here <coughs> and the steam comes into the steam chamber which on this device here will actually be at this port here because this is an in-tank unit and the steam comes down the lance which is mounted within the vessel and it's a double skinned lance so the steam carries down on the inner surface and the outer surface provides a insulation barrier so there's no burn on of the product on the steam lance. It then comes into the faction pump which will be coming in from this direction here in this case and on the diagram it's from position one. Now within this area here we have conditioning ports. Now those conditioning ports they condition the steam and raise the velocity and it then exits from those conditioning chamber into the fluid line. We have fluid sitting resident in the internal bore and Please feel free when uh, you have the opportunity to look at the device, but be careful. <laughs> it's machined from solid billets of stainless steel, so uh, be careful of the toes and fingers. You can see that there's very little in the way of restriction within the device. So we can install it in lines, either as a single unit or in parallel, depending on the operating conditions we wish to achieve. And the steam exits, once it's been accelerated, through an annular nozzle and when you look down the back end of the unit you will see just a, about a one millimeter gap where the steam exits into that fluid stream. So as the steam comes through it's accelerated to above the speed of sound and it hits that fluid that's contained within this chamber and it's a disruptive device. What it's doing is as the velocity of the steam hits that fluid it breaks that fluid into very small droplets. The big benefit here is that you initially start off with a very constrained fluid. And if you were looking at heat transfer terms with a plate heat exchanger, you've got limited contact surface. By this disrupted device, when that steam hits that fluid, it disrupts it, it turns it into very small droplets. And the size of those droplets is controllable by the steam pressure. That gives us a great advantage in terms of heat transfer surface area. You can imagine that you've got a constrained fluid, you've now turned that fluid into a vapour phase, so you've got millions of droplets 
all with a surface area. And that gives you a tremendous, a significant increase in contact surface area for the incoming steam to dissipate into and condense into that fluid. The real benefit is the fact that the, most of the energy transfer there is kinetic energy because you've got that velocity of the steam hitting that fluid. You then get that steam condensing into those droplets and the conditions that operate within that unit, you will see that as we go into the mixing chamber, we see a negative pressure. As the steam hits and condense, we then start to see an increase in pressure and we then see a combined fluid flow exiting. And that's how the system operates as a pump. And you've got very turbulent conditions within that mixing chamber. But those conditions can be tuned to be very turbulent or not so turbulent, depending on what we're trying to achieve with the product. Here we have a graph here of actually the, the unit. So here's the steam infuser, the vacuum pump. And what we're looking at here is the pressure across the vacuum pump from the inlet side to the discharge. And you can see in operation, we see this negative pressure that comes down to minus 0.8 bar. And as it exits, you see the greater pressure and there we have the pumping moment. So we're then transferring the fluids through under the control of the vacuum pump. And the other interesting point to note is the temperature profile. You see the temperature profile comes in and we see about a 10, 15 degree rise in temperature across the unit. The benefit to you as producers and manufacturers is that we move away from traditional contact surface areas with high temperature steam or hot water systems and we have a low thermal gradient so there's less product damage to the, to the product through thermal uh, gradient and you see less, but there is no burn on compared to a normal plate pack or jacketed vessel. We also have a video. Now, to try to explain what goes on within the unit as the fluid passes through the unit, we see the disruptive phase as the steam enters the mixing chamber, the turbulent conditions in the mixing chamber, and that condensation phase. We have a video where we've used an inline unit and we've replaced the rear section of the vacuum pump with a clear perspex uh, tube. And you can actually see the three phases as we move from fluid through to the vapour phase and then back through to the condensation phase looking at the, the fluid transfer from that. Here we go and I'll just talk you through as we go through. There's a like uh, introduction here. What you'll see first of all is the inline vacuum unit. You will see it filled with fluid. At the moment we then pass water into it so we're filled now with water and now we're introduced steam. And you'll see some turbulence, here we go. We've now put steam on the unit and we now have the unit pumping, and recirculating around the vessel. We've now added dye to the water and now we will start to increase the pressure. And here we go. There is that area where you've seen that disruption of the steam coming into the line. We've now got the vapor phase. This area here is the condensation phase before it transfers back to your single fluid phase. And you can see that it's moving about here in this case because we're actually controlling the unit manually. But in normal systems, we use automatic control systems, which provides much more fine tolerance control. But the key thing here is the controllability of this area here, of the vapor phase, and you can see the condensation point. Is that okay? Does anybody like to see that again, or is that run through enough? That's the operation of the unit. Um, is anybody any questions that uh, I'd like to ask or anything that I maybe have missed or uh, <laughs> not explained very clearly? Okay. Yeah, how much additional condensate typically is there? We normally work on a basis around about 8% in that sort of area. So we look at the recipes and we would then remove 8% uh, of uh, water or other um, aqueous base from the recipe. And then we probably structure the recipes different to what you would currently do if you're using traditional steam jacketed or plate heat exchanger systems. 8% from say 25 to 85 degrees, isn't it? Yes, it is. Normal operating area. 
but obviously we can obviously go back and calculate that down uh, depend on different <coughs> recipe additions.